Hello, this is a quick tutorial on how to make an abstract desktop using the gradient tool and its normal mode and then transferring or changing to the difference mode. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a new file. Um, mine is already preset to be the size of one of my screens. If I wanted to make it larger, I would need to multiply the width by three, which would give me 5,760 pixels. We won't bother with that. Um, right here, you can see that I've also have my resolution on the higher side, simply because most of our monitor monitors, including our phones, have very dense pixels per inch. Uh, I'm going to leave that. You can also see that I've also changed my comment to be default to my name and the year. Um, and I'm going to hit OK. So there we go. Uh, my layer is over here. My tool is right here. This is the gradient. It's set to different, so I'm going to reset it back to normal. I have lots of different shapes. I'm going to go with the linear. I'm going to turn off the repeat feature. So I'm back to defaults. I could just hit the refresh and hit go to default if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to choose a lot of colors. Let's do the nauseating one and click and drag. And now you can see I let go. You can see that there's a lot of different points on the line. I can add points. I can also, if I added points, I could click to add a point. I can select a point and shift that color to a new location. I could come in here and make a locate color longer or wider. Uh, I could do lots of different things. I can also extend, change my gradient location if I wanted to. Let's see if it will. Oops, I didn't grab it correctly. So I changed the angle of it, so forth. Now, in order to set that gradient, I have to hit enter on the keyboard. Got it. Now I'm going to enter the same gradient, but I'm going to change it from normal to difference. Uh, I'm going to leave it default values down here for now, and I'm going to go this way. Maybe I'll go this way. Maybe I'll go this way. Maybe I'll go that way. So what you're seeing right now here is I'm making some judgmental decisions. Um, I'm picking and choosing how I want this to interact with the layer below. So I kind of like that. Okay, I'm going to hit enter. I'm not going to bother with the points. I am going to do some changes now here. I'm going to do a triangular wave. I'm going to leave it linear. And I'm going to apply it again. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty sweet. I love these colors right here. Nice and bright. Enter. Uh, let's do some fun stuff with the radial. This is a circle. I like this empty spot. That might be a good spot for it. Wow, that's neat. Um, it's awful kind of green. I wonder if we can move some of those. Ooh, there we go. Oh, that might be a little dull. That's a little, oh, we're getting eyeball-y. Ooh, that's a nice evil eyeball right there. Okay. So you got to make some conscious decisions with this assignment. Don't just drag and hit enter, drag and hit enter. All right. Now, I'm going to save as because um, in my environment, it's a lot different than yours. I'm going to go graphic design. Do I have a folder for the fall of? No, I don't. So there, fall 2019. There we go. And then I need to name this, and I just double click, and this is going to be wallpaper. I'm typing with one hand because I have to hold a mic right up against my voice. And I'll bet that that's not working most of the time. There. Now, I've saved it. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to just quickly add something here so you can see. There's, ooh, that's actually pretty neat. So I hit enter. Now notice over here, you can see that little star. That little star is telling me that I need to save it again. So I can just do control S and it will save. 
Now, this is saving in a GIMP file format. You can't use it anywhere but in GIMP, and we really want to use this as a wallpaper. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we're going to go to File, and we're going to Export. And it keeps our name, and it just automatically changes it to a ping format. Now, a ping format has uh, the same type of format as a JPEG, which is 16 million plus colors if we want. And it has transparency. Okay, that's the big kicker with the ping. It allows you to have transparent sections of your image if you want. A JPEG does not allow for transparency. Um, and a GIF um, does allow for transparency, but you're only able to have 256 colors. So you got to learn the difference between the three image formats. Now, I'm in the same location. I'm in my fall. 2019 folder. I'm going to export. It's going to ask me some information. I definitely want to save my gamma so that it's the same vibrant colors on all machines. You know how certain Macs have washed out colors, whereas Windows has more vibrant colors. That's because it has a different gamma. Um, and then I keep it at 9. I have all of these options. We'll learn about what all this data is and I'm going to export. So right now we are using the a, uh, RGB color. RGB color is an additive color. It's lit up from behind. So it's bright. It doesn't need to absorb color. So when you print something, it might look darker when you print it than when you looked at it on a computer. And that's simply because of the kind of printing. Printing goes with cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, whereas a monitor uses RGB, red, green, and blue. It's additive, whereas the printer, the CMYK, that is subtractive, if you will. So this is how it looks on this monitor right now. If I change to, look at that, wow. Do you see how dull some colors got? Did you see that? Let's go back, okay? Color management, I'm gonna turn off the proof. Watch there. I'm gonna turn it back on. Watch. It takes a little bit, there we go. Did you see that? So that's a dramatic difference. It's still cool. It's still good, the colors, but they're not as bright as they were. So that's something we need to be aware of it, when it comes time for us to do some printing uh, or at least save files to print, such as that. That's it. Have fun.